In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to get rich quick. All right. All right, look, let's get real. You can't get rich quick. In fact, let me put it a different way. Quick, you've gotta define what that actually means. I've never met anybody that's got rich really in less than 10 years time. And you've really gotta define what you mean by rich. If having a passive income at 20 grand a month is rich for you, then that's your rich. But I'm talking about super rich. So I'm gonna teach you the five things that were taught to me about how you can become rich. So the first thing is really about understanding how bad or how much you suck right now at money. The majority of people live to their means, okay? So let's say that you get your first job on the ladder, you're earning 10 grand a year, Everything that you do in your life is all based around paycheck to paycheck, you know, weekly income to monthly income. You live to your means. What tends to happen over time is you earn more money, but your means increase. So instead of having a two-year-old mobile phone, you'll get a brand new mobile phone. Instead of that costing you 10 pound a month, it'll cost you 50 quid a month. Now that's no big deal, right? But if you've got 10 of those things, all of a sudden you've got 500 pound a month going down the drain on things that you don't really need. The decision that you've got to make is if you are really serious about becoming rich, you've got to invest cash flow, not spend cash flow on crap that you don't need. So the first rule is understand how bad you are with money right now and have that realization because you're never going to get rich if you don't do number two, which is educate yourself. The best people to educate yourself are not the morons that are posting videos on Facebook saying, look at me on a beach in my Lamborghini. That's nonsense, they've rented it. You know, they've gone on a weekend to bloody Bermuda. They're not millionaires, that, it's a fallacy. In order for you to become a millionaire or even thinking about going the next stage, becoming a billionaire, you've got to educate yourself from people that have been there, done, there, done that, worn the t-shirt. So some prime examples. Bill Gates, do you think he's wrote a book on business? Absolutely. Steve Jobs, do you think he's wrote a book on business? Absolutely. Warren Buffett, do you think he's wrote a book on business? Absolutely. The best person in the world to educate you on becoming extremely wealthy is a man that's been there, done that, and worn the t-shirt, which is Warren Buffett. He understands leveraged income. He understands cash flow and how to get that working for you. He understands investment. So buy one of his books. Just type in Google, Warren Buffett becoming a millionaire and it'll bring up a book for you. So the first thing is understanding how bad you are with money right now. I mean, just having a basic income and expenditure for your own personal life is a great start. The second thing is start educating yourself. One of the best books that I read about really becoming rich uh, was by Brad Sugars. and It was called Billionaire in Training. I just love that title. Billionaire in training, so I'm training to become a billionaire. I'm still there now. Um, but he talked about the right investment mindset, when uh, things are falling and when to invest in things, when to save and when to spend. I'll put a link down at the bottom, by the way, and if you comment on the video, I'll give you an opportunity to win the book. So there you go, that's a free giveaway on this one. Number three is really understanding the benefit of having three accounts. Um, so three bank accounts should be about three different things. Now, whether you've got a business or whether you've got a job, you can still have three accounts. The first thing is a day-to-day -day account. So in your business, let's just look at it from a business perspective to start off with. Your day-to-day -day is your trading account, what you're spending and what you're receiving every single day. Okay, so to buy things, to spend on things, to cover things like um, your employee costs, to cover things like just basic day-to-day -day expenses. The second thing is your tax account. So when you put an invoice out, you know you're gonna have to pay 20% corporation and 20% to VAT. So 40% of the total income should go into the tax account. Why is that important? Because then you'll never get to the end of a quarter and go, oh no, I've got an ever such a big VAT bill that I can't pay. If you've got a tax account and you're putting the money in at source, you're never gonna have a bad taxation bill. If anything, you're gonna to have too much money in your tax account, so you're gonna put that into the third account, which is your profit account. So the three accounts should be day-to-day, -day, taxation, which you should be putting at least 20% for corporation, at least your VAT that you're invoicing into that account, and the third thing is your profit account. 
you're now in complete control of your finance. Now your profit account, you can really do whatever you, whatever you want with. So that should then become either your fourth account or your investment account. Then we're looking at number four, which is start investing now. Often I'll hear it's not the right time to start investing. I'm not talking about cyber money. I'm not gonna tell you to invest in Bitcoin. The simplest thing to start investing on are things that you know are gonna reap value long term. Not 10 grand in today, 12 grand out tomorrow. 10 grand in today, 100 grand out in 20 years. That's the investment mindset. I'm okay for this money to sit there for 20 years. And then start, if, or even better, decide the lifespan of your investment. So if you know that you're gonna invest over a 10 year period, do you think you can then research markets of what, what have always gone up over a 10 year period? If you think about it, the housing market, although it takes a blip from time to time, you look at prices 20 years ago to today, Houses are more expensive than, than they were 20 years ago. You know, 20 years before that, and then things really start getting interesting. So property could be a good thing. Antiques are always a good thing to invest in. So what I'm teaching people when they're investing is to invest in assets. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the stock market, mainly because I don't know enough about it. I've not done enough here to educate myself about the stock market. So either you need to get somebody that's extremely close to you that you can trust implicitly to work as your advisor on stocks and shares or invest in assets, things that are always gonna at least retain value. A stock can go from um, you know, $2 a share to 10 cents a share really quickly. House prices are never gonna go from a 100 grand house to zero. They might go to it from 100 now they're worth 80, at least I've still got 80,000 pounds worth of liquidity within, within my asset. The good thing with properties, you can also get yield on a monthly basis if you're getting somebody to pay that mortgage off for you. Again, I'm not the authority on investing in property, so educate yourself. Who are the great property gurus out there? What seminars can you go to? What books can you read to really understand how to get the best out of your property portfolio? Are you doing the flip around? So are you working with you know, good carpenters and good plasterers that you buy a crap house, you flip it for a profit quickly? Are you more interested in your long-term um, uh, long term investment where you're getting people to actually pay the mortgage over a 25 year, year time? So you've got a portfolio in 25 years, which is debt free, so you're really asset rich. Or are you gonna do what, which is my main focus, which is buying broken businesses that don't work, fixing them and then selling them for a profit. Better still, getting businesses for free that aren't working or that are losing money, you buy the debt, you know, you can buy a business for a pound or a penny even. Buy the debt, understand that you know how to trade out of that and get a passive income from the business. The key here is there is no simple get rich quick scheme. This stuff takes time. And it always goes down to the, the old thing that my dad used to tell me. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It's not easy. It's really bloody difficult. That's why not many people are rich. You, know, you look at the scale of how much people are worth, they say the top 3% of the world's population own, I think it's around 70 to 80% of all the money. Normally, yeah, a lot of those have been born into it. But if you look at the majority of those people, they've hustled and grinded their way to the top through education, investing early, and keeping it. You know, one of the things that my dad always used to teach me, which I didn't listen to for so long, and I really wish I did, was to at least invest 20% of what I've earned every single week. Invest it. Now that could just be an ISA. I actually did some maths with him a few months back and that would have been a lot of money now if I'd have just done it instead of going out and having a party. The last thing is to reduce your, out, your, your outgoings, the things that you don't need. Now I'm not saying that you should work really hard, get loads of money and not live your life. I'm talking about the basic things that are really affecting the cash flow of the business or the cash flow of your personal, um, personal account. So that might be lowering how much you're spending on food. You know, really considering how much waste you've got in, in your household. It might be, do I really need the iPhone 8? Team CIS, or am I okay with the iPhone 18? Is that gonna be okay for another year? If you really think about it, it's the small things that make the big impact, not necessarily the big commercial decisions. It's all those small things. Me and my wife actually went through um, this a couple of months back. You know, she, I was professing this on to somebody and she said, well, we haven't done that for a while, let's do that. 
we actually found that we were overspending about £600 a month on stuff that we didn't even need. Now, £600 a month is a lot to some people. It's not a lot to other people. But we actually worked out over a 10-year period that over £70,000 in cash over 10 years. Just investing that into an ICE is probably going to get us 10000 So that's 70 gone to 80. Put even better, that's buying a house. You know, or at least 50% of a property as a buy to let to flip on maybe at a later, just on basic stuff. Like we've already got pasta, we don't need any more. It's the simple stuff that really makes the big impact. So let's go through the top five things. First and foremost is understanding that you are crap with money. The majority of people are. So come to terms with that. Once you've come to terms with it, you're now ready to educate yourself. So learn from the best. Go to the books, the people that have been there. Just go with the top 10 richest people in the world and start to learn from their publications. Number three, get three bank accounts right now. Whether you've got money to save, it doesn't matter. Just having a savings account, you've just increased your chance of, of actually having some savings. If you've not got a savings account, you're probably not going to save that much. The fourth thing is the right time to invest is now. Whether that's just in an ISA, you know, creating a goal that you want to save a thousand pound up over a month, you want to save a thousand pound up over a year, have a goal and stick to it. I had a conversation with an employee of mine literally this week and we, we looked at, okay, so what are you earning? What do you want to save? What do you want to save it for? Came up with an income goal. I completely forgot it. He actually came through to my office the other day and said, oh, by the way, income goal done. I've saved seven and a half thousand quid. How cool is that? And the fourth one is to reduce your, um, your cash sapping, cash flow issues straight away. So start really doing some cost analysis. A quick tip if you're running a business and you're not necessarily sure where to start, actually use the people that you're paying money to right now. Bookkeepers, accountants. Often you will use your accountant as a calculator that you can buy from Poundland and you're paying them 1,500, 2,000, some people 1,000 pounds a month to your accountant. Really quick, simple strategy. Ring your accountant up this afternoon, right? Use this word for word. It's a really good one to use. And say, I've just been into a, a, a really good accountant that's just been referred to me, and they've called me up and they've said that they can reduce 10% of, um, of my fixed and variable overheads overnight. Now, I didn't know whether to believe them or not, which is the reason why I've come to you. I'd really like you to have a look at how much you can save for me. Now, if you think about it, if you've got a business that's turned over a million quid, and let's say your expenses are 50, uh, half a million, and they come back to you and say, I'm really sorry, I couldn't find 10%, but I did find 2%, work it out. That's a good investment just for a simple phone call. So really start reducing poor cash flow activities wherever possible. I'm not telling you to scrimp and save, live the life that you want, but if you want to become wealthy and rich, you've got to start investing. So use the poor cash flow activities for your investment pot. There are my top five tips for today. For those of you that actually want the book, The Billionaire in Training, which I learned so much from, uh, thanks ever so much for publication, pub, um, publishing that, publishing? Uh, publishing that uh, I think it was about 15 years ago. Uh, Brad Sugars, so I'll make sure you're tagging that. And if you want a copy of his book, oh, it's a great one as well. Last thing for you, he's just actually released something called Pulling Profits, which is a new book that he's just published. I think it's about 18 quid to buy. I'll put a link in the description. He's given away a thousand pound training package for free, uh, which is all online, which is everything that he's learned in 20 years on video. And he's gifting it that for you for free. So I'll also put a link in that as well. Buy the book, get the free training course. Remember, that's number two, educate yourself. You know, Brad's worth a small fortune, so you could learn a lot from him. Look, until next time, it's been great educating you. Comment below, what is it that you want to get us to talk about in the upcoming videos? Until next time. Thank you.